The topic of this video is using patch panels in your home network or your home lab. And I have a little desktop rack here that I'm going to be using for demonstration throughout this video to show you a couple different options that you, you might have for patch panels. There's more options than what I have available to demonstrate, but I'm going to talk about a couple cons that I've tried and that, that I've used and have hands-on experience with. So if you're new to home labbing and home networking in a more advanced fashion, then this is something you might be interested in at some point when you have enough devices and, and you have a good location that you want to put all your centralize all your device network infrastructure and that sort of thing you're going to be starting to probably look at putting a rack you could either get a small one like this to put like under your desk or if you like it on your desk just to tinker around with for home lab purposes or you could have a little closet you might want to get one a little bigger than this this is just a little 8u unit that i bought so that i can use for video demonstrations to show full network builds and that kind of thing and so let's take a look at a couple that i have here so the first patch panel i bought is this cable matters patch panel and this one is a just like a traditional punch down patch panel and i have a, an example cable here that i will show up close where i punched it down onto the back of this these are what you normally would see like in, in a lot of network closets before the modular patch panels uh, were made and so you basically have these type of panels where everything had to be punched into here so this this kind of panel works well if you have a lot of wall drops in your house and your connections aren't going to change that much over time. You could just patch them down one time and then you're good to go. Uh, as you can see, the way this is, if you have a bunch of cables here, it gets a little bit messy, but it's doable because you can lift the cables up and you know you probably want to start on one side and work your way to the other side. So that way they just kind of lay nicely kind of on top of each other and they'll kind of come out from behind here. And some of these might have cable supports on the bottom. This one doesn't have any cable supports, but they are patched in pretty pretty good here so you probably don't need a lot of uh, support there but it would be nice maybe for longevity if you had one like this that maybe had some supports after setting this up and I realized when I was going to you start finishing my basement I was like this is going to be a, a kind of a pain because I want to need more ports and and punch a bunch more jacks down but at least I only have to do that one time but then I decided I probably want to upgrade to a modular patch panel and a modular patch panel looks like this it just has a bunch of open slots and this one has a cable support on the bottom. The nice thing about modular patch panels is you can use any kind of keystone that you would like that would fit in there, such as this RJ45 coupler, which basically connect two Ethernet cables together without doing any punching down of these keystones. So you can even get like HDMI and USB ones as well for like audio video type use use cases so you got a lot of flexibility there the patch panel not only makes things look more aesthetically pleasing on the front side rack keeps things nice and neat and organized but it allows you to test different things out real quick like i've there's various times where i've unplugged something from the patch panel and then i plug it into some other port on some other switch temporarily to test something out or i would reroute something real quick temporarily and then I just plug something back in when I'm done. So it allows me to do that without having to go into the back of, of the, or behind my rack and do a bunch of stuff. Until recently, I only used the RJ45 Keystone punch downs for all the wall drops that are in throughout my house and RJ45 couplers for devices inside of my rack. But I haven't used the RJ45 Keystone jacks that are toolless and that's something i thought would be interesting to try out sometimes because i've seen them before but vce link sent me some of their toolless rj45 keystone jacks to try out so i'm going to demonstrate how to do that in this video i tried doing it without instructions and i almost had it right but then i, I messed up one part of it and once i looked at their instructions because it doesn't come with any instructions you have to go to the website to see them uh, once i saw the instructions that made sense and i figured out how to do it um, it's not super difficult. This is the toolless keystone jack and it comes with this little piece that pops in the top and it has the A and B wiring standard so you know where to put each of the wires. Next you'll put the wires through the top of the connector and wire it according to the wiring standard on the side of the connector. This is the part I messed up before because I was just doing it on the bottom side but the wires need to go through the top. Then use some wire cutters to cut off the excess wires on the side of the connector piece. It should look clean like this close as you can cut to the side of the connector. On the bottom connector, the metal posts are sticking out at a 45 degree angle to help hold the wires in better. And notice there's this little white piece here, this circular piece. That's where the top connector connects in. So you just need to make sure you line that up when you stick that into the bottom part of the connector and then you push down on it tightly. 
and then you can close the lid on top and then push it until it comes all the way to the bottom of the connector. And this is what it looks like finished with the, the top shut on it. So it looks nice and neat and it's a completed keystone that you can plug into your patch panel. The great thing about these toolless keystones is they fit alongside other types of keystones. I have two different brands and they both fit in this Cable Matters patch panel. So I decided to put two keystones on a very short ethernet cable to see how well they would work with my very basic ethernet cable tester. And I was pleased to see that both of the connectors worked the first time that I installed them. So they should be very easy to work with once you understand the process on how to install them. Now I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how to do a punch down keystone. And first thing I do is just strip the wire and then take off the outer jacket and then you separate all the wires. And then some of the ethernet cables will have uh, this little separator at the top and you just can cut that off with some scissors or whatever you have available. And then you can just separate all the wires out so that you can get them ready to be punched down. The Cable Matters Keystones comes with this nice little plastic tray that you can snap the keystone down into while you prepare the wires to punch down. On the side of the keystone, it has the color coding you need for the, both the A and B standards. And when most of the time you'll use the B standard, it seems to be the most popular. Next, you'll want to arrange the cables according to the color coding pattern, and you just kind of push them down into the, each slot so they can be ready to be punched down with the punch down tool. When you're ready to punch down the keystone, make sure you're using the proper cutting edge for the punch down so that you do not mess up your keystone jack wiring. And you just punch on each of the wires until they're in there nice and tight and where you can pick off each of the individual wires so you have a nice clean keystone when you're done. Another option you might want to use if for some potentially for some of your internal connections, if you don't want to deal with having a patch panel, you can get one of these brush cable organizers and you, you can see the bristles there in the light and you can stick uh, cables through the the back side or the front side, as you can see, like here, I can put an ethernet cable through and it gives it, makes it look a little bit cleaner than just having a bunch of random cables coming to the front of your rack from the behind. However, when you need to move a cable to a different port, let's say, for example, you, you need to like do what I'm doing in this video by shoving it across the patch cable or, or you have to push it back behind the, the panel and then reroute it through the front. But you can see it's a little more of a pain than just simply swapping out the patch cable on the front when you need to test or try something out. But it's doable. I just wanted to show the difference between a cable organizer and a patch panel. I use this cable organizer for internal connections in my server rack of various devices that were in there when I was using the punch down patch panel because I didn't want the punch down connections that were inside my rack because that's kind of a pain because I'd have to create custom cables or cut perfectly usable cables, which I didn't want to do. But that was before I got the module patch panel. Once I got that, it kind of made this a little bit obsolete for me because I started using these RJ45 couplers, as I mentioned earlier. And so I could just connect in stuff from inside my rack behind the patch panel, and then I can connect off the front. And then that makes it really nice and neat. And then once I connect that in there, I can just connect it where I need to and, and various network switches that I have in my rack. I like to thank VCE Link for sponsoring these toolless keystone jacks so that I could uh, experiment with them and see how they work compared to the keystone jacks that require a punch down tool. And this is a nice alternative. If you, if you just have wire cutters and you don't want to mess with a punch down tool and you know, most people have wire cutters laying around and if not, they're not super expensive. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it's not a very technical video, because I just wanted to cover the basics of using some patch panels in your home network and how they might be useful. And if you're a more experienced user, you know, you're going to know all this stuff anyway, but I wanted to kind of make a video for newer users so they know what kind of options are available. And there's even more than what I've discussed in this video that you might want to be, you know, check out and be interested in. But I want to kind of get you started down that path of like, if you're considering setting up a little rack, even if it's a little basic one like this, it's like 40 US dollars that you can you know, grow and start learning new things. This is something that's fun to play around with if you like this sort of thing, and I hope that you found it useful. So until next time, I'm Dustin Casto, and I'll catch you in the next video.